tell him the John Doe Club wants to talk to him. Let them in, Mr. Mayor. Let them come in. Okay, folks, but remember your manners. No stampeding. Walk slow, like you do when you come to pay your taxes. My name is Bert Hansen, Mr. Doe. I'm the head soda jerker at Schwabacher's Drug Store. Well, sir, you see, me and my wife, we heard your broadcast, and we got quite a bang out of it, especially my wife. Kept me up half the night saying, that man's right, honey. The trouble with the world is nobody gives a hoot about his neighbor. That's why everybody in town sore and cranky at each other. I kept saying, it's fine, but how's a guy going to quote around loving the kind of neighbors we got? Old Sourpuss, for instance. <laughs> you see, Sourpuss Smithers is a guy who lives all alone next door to us. He's a cranky old man and runs a second-hand furniture store. We haven't spoken to him for years. I always figured he was an ornery old gent that hated the world because he was always slamming his garage door and playing the radio so loud he kept half the neighbors up. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the next morning I'm out watering the lawn and I look over and there's Sourpuss on the other side of the hedge straightening out a dent in his fender. And uh, my wife yells to me out the window. She says, go on, speak to him, Bert. And I figured, well, heck, I can't lose anything. So I yelled over to him, good morning, Mr. Smithers. He went right on pounding his fender. It was I burned. So I turned around to give my wife a dirty look. And she said, louder, louder, he didn't hear you. So in a voice you could have heard in the next county, I yelled, good morning, Mr. Smithers. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Old Sourpuss turned around, surprise-like, and he put on a big smile, came over and took my hand like an old lodge brother, and he said, good morning, Hanson. I've been wanting to talk to you for years, only I thought you didn't like me. And then he started chatting away like a happy little kid, and he got so excited, his eyes out. Well, Mr. Doe, before we got through, I found out Smithers is a swell egg, only he's pretty deaf, and that accounts for all the noises. He says it's a shame how little we know about our neighbors. And then he got an idea, and he said, how's about inviting everybody someplace where we can all get together and know each other a little better? Well, I'm feeling so good by this time, I'm right for anything, so Smithers goes around the neighborhood inviting everybody to a meeting at the schoolhouse, and I tell everybody that comes in the store, including Mr. Farbecker, my boss. I'm talking too much. Oh, oh, well, I'll be doggone if over 40 people don't show up. Of course, none of us knew what to do, but we sure got a kick out of seeing how glad everybody was just to say hello to one another. Tell him about making Sourpuss chairman. Oh, yeah. We made Sourpuss chairman and decided to call ourselves the John Doe Club and say, incidentally, this is my wife. Come here, honey. This is my wife, Mr. Doe. How do you do, Mr. Doe? Uh, Sourpuss is here, too. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> this is Sourpuss, or excuse me, uh, Mr. Smithers, Mr. Doe. That, that's all right. If you didn't call me Sourpuss, it wouldn't feel natural. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I, I guess nearly everybody in the neighborhood came except the Delaney's. The Delaney's live in a big house with an iron fence around it, and they always keep their blinds drawn. And we always figured that he was just an old miser that sat back counting his money, so why bother about inviting him until uh, Grimes, the milkman, spoke up, and he said, uh, say, you've got the Delaney's all wrong. And then he tells us about how they canceled their milk last week, and how when he found a note in the bottle, he got kind of curious-like, and he peeked in under the blinds and found the house was empty. If you ask me, he says, they're starving. Old man Delaney been bringing his furniture over to my place at night, one piece at a time, and selling it. Yeah. And, well, sir, a half dozen of us ran over there to fetch him, and we brought him to the meeting. And what a reception they got. Well, everybody shook hands with him and made a fuss over him, and, well, finally, Mr. and Mrs. Delaney just sat right down and cried. And then we started to find out about a lot of other people. Yeah, sure. Well, you know Grubel, for instance. Grubel's here. Yeah, that, that's a... Of course, you don't know Grubel, but... He's the man that everybody figured was the worst no account in the neighborhood because he, he was living like a hermit and nobody would have anything to do with him. Uh, that isn't old Murphy. The postman told us the truth. Why, Grubel, he says, he lives out of garbage cans because he won't take charity because it's ruined his self-respect, he says. Just like you said on the radio, Mr. Doe. 
Well, sir, about a dozen families got together and gave Grubel a job watering their lawns. Isn't that wonderful? And then we found jobs for six other people, and they've all gone off from me. And my boss, Mr. Schwabacher, made a job in his warehouse for old man Delaney. And he gave you that five dollar raise. Yeah, wasn't that swell? Why, Bert, I, I feel slighted. I'd like to join, but nobody asked me. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor, but we voted that no politician could join. Just the John Doe's of the neighborhood could. You know how politicians are. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. The reason we wanted to tell you this, Mr. Doe, was to, was to give you an idea of what you started. And from where I'm sitting, I, I don't see any sense in you jumping off any building. No, no. And, well, thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Doe. You're a wonderful man. It strikes me you can be mighty useful walking around for a while. Uh, Say goodbye, Bye. 